I got a call one Saturday to say that my son was in hospital. I got the news I didn't want. He had suffered a severe head injury and following brainstem testing, which showed that he had passed away, we decided that he should become an organ donor. We'd prefer to tell families that their loved ones are going to get better and our treatments are going to fix them. But sometimes when the injury or the illness is so catastrophic that no matter what we do, this patient is not going to survive. That's when we speak to the specialist nurses in organ donation. We get involved with patients on ICU that are ventilated who are coming towards the end of their life. So either with discussion with the family around the withdrawal of treatment or if they fulfil criteria then for brain stem testing. And then we will come in and be involved in those breaking bad news conversations. It's quite emotional experience, especially for the family, but also as an ICU nurse it's a lot for you to get your head around supporting that patient who actually is dying, but now we have to optimise them and get them in a position where those organs are in a really good position to help someone who's been waiting for a transplant and this is their second chance at life. And the specialist nurses communicate with the various teams around the country who have people waiting for transplants. The theatre teams are mobilised and the process of organ retrieval goes ahead whilst looking after the family and their loved one who is going to be the organ donor. We do support the family so they absolutely get to spend the time that they want with their relative or their friend prior to organ donation. We were allowed to spend as much time as we wanted with him. We were encouraged to stay with him, to talk to him, hold his hand, stroke his head. And when they came along to get him ready to go to the theatre, they were so respectful and dignified about the whole thing. We promise that family that we will look after their loved one, their next of kin, and we take that seriously. For us as well as a unit, it's what the family goes away with, so not just the experience of the whole process, but what we can give them as keepsakes from their loved one. So we have things like memory boxes, we might take a lock of their hair, we normally do handprints for them. In the emergency part, we do see patients who have end-stage organ failure and some of which who are waiting for an organ transplant, and I see the impact that has on them and their family and how miserable it can be for them. I had diabetes for 25 years. I was told that I would need a kidney transplant. I was given an option for having a kidney and pancreas double transplant, which I took. Since the transplant, raised about £17,000 for charity to date through various walks and things, including one with my donor's mum, who did Hadrian's Wall, which was a huge privilege and honour to do. Often families are in turmoil knowing what to do and what their loved one would want. So when there's a decision already registered or they've had that conversation, it's almost a weight off the shoulders knowing what their loved one would want. I can never imagine being in that position and how they must be feeling at such a traumatic time to make such a difficult decision if it's not spoken about previously. To have that insight beforehand, I think can help them. We need to talk about organ donation a bit more and we, we have a taboo around death and we need to break that taboo a little bit and break that barrier. And by doing that, we can save lives. We don't need these organs anymore once we've died, but somebody else does. Three people die a day waiting for a transplant. That life-saving gift is a phenomenal thing to give. We see so much death, and especially over the last few years. And I just think to give something so beautiful and life-enriching such as donation, I suppose in my eyes, it's just the most precious gift you can give out of such a traumatic and tragic situation. If that patient or that family have decided that they're going to be an organ donor, then they have the potential to save up to nine people's lives with, with those various organs. Usually the coordinators afterwards will send a letter and they'll tell us how many recipients there were. We can gain some solace from that, that what we did was of value. A couple of months afterwards, we had some news that one of his valves had gone to a two and a half year old boy with congenital heart disease. I just thought, come Christmas, for the first time in that little boy's life and the life he got with his parents, they would see him jumping around like a proper healthy two and a half year old boy on Christmas morning. And I must admit, my heart just sang. In the UK, currently there's about 7,000 people on the transplant waiting list. And these are all people waiting desperately for an organ. We have many people dying of end organ failure. It could be your heart, it could be your liver, it could be your kidneys. But once you do a transplant, your life would change. You're really not necessarily just saving somebody's 
life. You're giving somebody the opportunity to live a life that they never would have imagined. And in some ways, they're living a life in honour of the person who's passed away. If Alex hadn't been a donor, that could have been five other people that had died when there was no need for them to die, where with donation they've been given an opportunity and a chance to live the life that Alex hasn't been able to live. Talk to your families, talk to anybody that will listen to you if you want to become a donor. Most of our donors come from a sudden death, so there's no preparation for that family member. They might have kissed them goodbye that morning and the next time they see them is on an ICU bed with a tube in the mouth on a ventilator. To ask them then to talk about donation, sometimes it's very hard, whereas if the family know what they want, it makes that so much easier. Sometimes I cry about it, but it's not sad tears because I know that Alex would have been immensely proud of what he'd done.